Thanks for watching this special edition of the Council in Brief. I'm Susan Kennedy. The County Council has unanimously approved a $5.4 billion budget for fiscal year 18, a slight increase from last year. The agreement comes after weeks of deliberations, and it shares the Council's core goal of supporting schools, public safety, and nonprofit organizations. The fiscal year 2018 budget represents a 2.7% increase from last year. It builds on the basic services residents depend on without raising taxes. The budget includes a property tax credit of $692 for homeowners whose properties are their primary residences, and it also meets the FY18 target for the county's reserve, 8.9% of adjusted governmental revenues. But it's so important for local government not to lose sight of what our residents expect most of us. What do they rely upon? They rely upon our schools. They rely upon our roads. They rely on us to have good libraries. great parks. So when we do all of the other things that we must do, particularly with respect to the safety net, we can't forget the fundamentals of county government. And I think this budget attends to the fundamentals. We're not raising taxes, which at when every community meeting I've been to this month, I've told them that, and there's a big range of applause there, and I think it's important for our community. Uh, to know that this budget is addressing many, many problems, but we are not raising taxes. And we pose this question to you all because we are first introduced to Juliet today, finally, for the first time. Does anybody remember what Romeo was like? Close to half of the county's operating budget goes to fund the school system. This year, the approved budget funds $2.52 billion for Montgomery County Public Schools, a 2.6% increase from fiscal year 2017. Tough decisions made by the council last year laid the groundwork for the ability to fully fund the school's request this year. Nobody really expected that every year consistently the school system would be adding an average of 2,000 students and those students happen to be students that require a lot of additional supports and so you know that was a real wake-up call last year when the executive decided that he wanted to propose a property tax increase all of us here in the county council decided that you know if we're going to do this then we have to make sure that money goes into the school system to do that course correction because if you let that continue the school system's quality uh, was definitely going to deteriorate and then it doesn't matter how much money you throw there. So that's why I think it was important to make the course correction last year and then continue on ensuring they're providing the supports this year. It's really about what is encompassed in this budget that makes uh, so much of a difference in our communities. Understanding that the great uh, progress we made in reducing class size uh, will be carried over and so more of that initiative will happen and so people whose schools may not have seen as much of a reduction in class size will start to see some of that. Uh, but in addition, all of the special specialized programs that we have throughout the school system that go into making sure that we're trying to do our best to eliminate uh, the uh, academic achievement and opportunity and equity gaps uh, that exist in many of our neighborhoods is also a key part of this budget. It's another tremendous step in the right direction. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The council continued its emphasis on increasing access to a variety of early childhood programs in this budget. It added funds to support the expansion of 10 Montgomery County Public School Head Start classrooms from half day to a full school day. The council's investment in early childhood education is something Council Vice President Hans Reamer is pushing the council to invest in. The Office of Legislative Oversight estimates that this pre-K expansion of four-year-olds at up to 300 percent of the federal poverty line would cost about 35 million dollars a year. I had suggested this year that we try to find five million in this budget to begin the investment. We learned, however, that it was not possible to get that full amount up and running or spent effectively this next school year due to space, staffing, and procurement constraints. Nevertheless, we were able to invest about two and a half million which will provide nearly 250 new full pre-K slots this school year for our most vulnerable children. Nagan Zemeshi. Funding for Montgomery College is above the required maintenance of effort level for the sixth straight year. The council added $3.2 million over the county executive's recommended budget to fund compensation and benefits for college employees. I'm pleased to say that we funded a large percentage of their request 
And while we weren't able to get to everything, we know that through state and county support, the college will be able to minimize its tuition increase in order to maintain affordability for all students, which is extremely important. Here's what this budget process entails. Uh, really having a partnership and having us all talk about things that are important matters. And we heard through a lot of the testimony through the education budget forums. Um, I'm very happy to be here tonight, and I'm happily representing the Montgomery College Alumni Board. Programs such as ACES or the new um, student services facility that will come, I think it will make all the difference. I just want to thank you all and encourage you to keep pushing and keep fighting for students as well. Good news for transportation this year. The budget includes $31.5 million for study, design, and right-of-way purchase for bus rapid transit. This includes $6 million for the U.S. Route 29 line and money for a new ride-on service along Route 29. If we do not add transit to 29, there's absolutely no way to deal with the amount of development that we've planned for 29. So if you believe the development's going to happen and you don't do something, um, the state will have to do something with the road configuration because the road there can't handle the amount of additional traffic we're going to put on it. So the BRT is a big deal and the state's been supportive because they do see the potential for the buses to take enough cars off the road that they don't have to widen the road. Folks should know the US 29 corridor is the most congested corridor in the entire state of Maryland. So people have been waiting for relief there for a long time. The county executive has proposed a bus rapid transit proposal that's under further study. So I'm glad the council supported for more research and design for bus rapid transit. But in the meantime, while we're waiting, the council also approved, put on a rec reconciliation list, uh, money for a, a limited stop uh, accelerated uh, ride on service to get people more quickly, ideally from Burtonsville through Briggs Cheney and Castle Boulevard and White Oak down to Silver Spring. The Parks Department will receive an increase in funding in an effort to bring that budget back to pre-recession levels. And the Department of Recreation is receiving a 10 percent increase in its budget. We continue to bring back some aspects of their budgets to pre-recession levels and to enhance and expand some of the facilities and services that residents enjoy most. Um, I'll just remind everyone we've increased funding for catching up on deferred maintenance there, cleaning and enhancing ball fields and expansing, expanding park facilities and trail systems. On the capital side of the budget, we kept the North Branch Trail and the Little D Bennett Day Use Area uh, projects on schedule, which is really great news for the neighboring communities, and those are the ones that have grown the most rapidly in the past few years. And in a move to provide more affordable housing in Montgomery County, the council approved $59 million for program uses in the Housing Initiative Fund. This includes money that will be allocated for the inside, not outside initiative to house the county's chronically homeless. When you have an individual living in the woods, living on the streets, drawing down emergency room care, frequently ending up incarcerated, study after study has shown that it is less expensive for the public sector to provide housing for those individuals than it is to meet their needs when they are living in the rough. $10.5 million will be allocated in this year's budget for community grants that support safety net programs and services that assist the disadvantaged. These agencies support the most vulnerable in the county by providing a variety of programs and services, including food, shelter, and other safety net services. I appreciate the work you're doing here, Paul and myself. Thank you. Oh, you, you are so sweet. Yeah, it takes a lot uh, of uh, good heart to care. Sometimes people have to uh, reach rock bottom to understand there's only one way up. Yeah, and, that's, right. and that's inspiration and love and caring from people like you. Thank you very much. The funding also supports after school programs, seniors, had a nice ride today. <laughs> and the disabled. One of those nonprofits is Montgomery Cares, an agency that works to increase access to health care. We've uh, continued our progress in this year's budget in ensuring that every resident of Montgomery County is able to see a doctor, regardless of economic status, regardless of insurance coverage. I was pleased uh, for the years following the enactment of the Affordable Care Act that we were actually able to spend less each year on Montgomery Cares because more and more of our residents were getting coverage through the exchanges or through expanded Medicaid. Indeed, 40,000 Montgomery County residents depend upon Obamacare for their health coverage. That coverage is at risk. The Republican Congress intends to dismantle it 
and unfortunately, the demands upon the Montgomery Cares network of community clinics are going to grow. I don't believe we're going to be able to maintain the downward trend in spending on that program. And indeed, this year, we've added resources substantially to meet that need, and I very much appreciate the support of my colleagues. The police force will increase in strength with this year's budget. There will be new officers on the beat in Montgomery Village and other fast-growing areas of the county. This year's budget has extra funding for fire and rescue and the newly developed mental health court. As a member of the Public Safety Committee, we worked hard to restore funding to the police department for overnight coverage in two districts, as well as funding for five additional patrol officers. The budget reflects funding for a 65-member recruit class in the Department of Fire, Rescue Services, and the circuit court budget includes funding for mental health court expenses so that this highly effective and very successful program solving court can continue to operate. Also, the Tacoma Park Fire Station is one of the only ones in the, in the county without a full-time paramedic, so I'm thrilled with that we provided $450,000 for needed 24-7 paramedic services in Tacoma Park fire station. This was a top priority for the city of Tacoma Park's um, government this year, and it, the need there is only going to grow when Washington Adventist Hospital moves up to White Oak. So thank you all for supporting that as well. The council also approved funding to establish the first supervised visitation and exchange center that will allow for safe interactions for families involved in difficult child custody situations. As the chair of the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council, I am particularly proud that the council is able to expand on the executive's proposal to open a supervised visitation and exchange center. This much needed service will be available this fall and will help families going through a very difficult time by providing a comfortable place where parents and children can interact safely. The county executive is expected to sign the budget into law before the start of the fiscal year. The budget process is demanding work and often requires In the meantime, tough Council President Berliner says he and his support. colleagues wrap up this budget satisfied it reflects the values of Montgomery County residents. I think that it is a combination of things, actually. I think that if you can indeed be fiscally responsible, no new taxes, and build on new programs like pre K, that's an important combination. So this budget really does combine three distinct elements, fiscal responsibility, our values, and attending to the basics. So it is the combination of those three things that I think is so important. That is unanimous. To find out more about the budget and the specific programs it funds, visit the website on your screen. Well, that does it for this special edition of the Council in Brief. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Every day, 78 people in the U.S. die from drug overdose, but they don't have to. In Maryland, if you're trying to save someone's life during an overdose, you're protected from prosecution by the Good Samaritan Law. You just saved her life. Visit our website for more on how this law protects you. So... I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek.